This is the Municipal Maintenance Director, David Menard, if you have not met him. Uh, if you've not had com complaints to the <laughs> Municipal Maintenance Department and such, uh, you'll go, we'll go through his budget. You'll see some of the numbers. Uh, he is one of the departments that has had some of the DEP mandates, especially for stormwater, for, for the cleaning of, uh, of certain items. And uh, yeah, I'm just really, Dave is, uh, even though he's been on since July, it, sound, it seems like it was yesterday because things are going so fast. I've appreciated all his help and uh, I'm gonna let him go because he knows his department. Did you did you want to start with the mandates since you were right on it with well, him? Well, you heard me say that I was awkwardly stumbling around that, but that that is the bigger picture, and it's it's for further down the road. Obviously, it's not this year's budget, but there are things that at some point we just have to say no, we can't do that. I'm sorry. So. Yeah, why don't we start with the, the DEP first. Uh, uh, stormwater regulations that were mandated uh, that you're supposed to be cleaning your catch basins twice a year and there's all kinds of uh, paperwork to fill out as far as even actually I, I, I went to a little bit of seminar on one of these things and it's huge they, they, they're starting to do audits to the town and conservation supposed to be part of this stormwater uh, Board of Health uh, they have they come after all these departments and you're supposed to have all these records of how many you, when you're cleaning them uh, you're supposed to be checking these outfalls and testing testing the waters and stuff like that with a, a small staff like that it, it, it's pretty much impossible what they're asking for and then what's coming down the road is what we do with our sweepers uh, the pile itself they consider this hazardous material that you know it, it picks up oils in the antifreezes from the asphalt roads we're picking us up so it's in this material which we're sanding and you, you know you, you have to put the stuff down for public safety and then and when you clean it up now they consider this a hazard to me uh, I would like to uh, actually put something in my budget for testing these piles because when they come down to do actually we already got fined in the past from DOP and we had to buy these uh, rain barrels and such just to get out of the huge fine. This was actually a Mark Andrews thing before Derek, and it cost us quite a few bucks to just uh, to get out of trouble with these with the DEP because it was we weren't reporting in the on time and stuff like that. Uh, besides that, we got the DEP on the Pocket Mills Dam, also, um, which that that's this uh, testing and everything. They have to they, we have to have engineering come down and and then not not that I can just I can inspect it and, and monitor the dam, but you have to have engineered reports to DP stating that you know this guy was qualified with hydraulic testing of the you know in, in checking and metering and everything on that on that pot so that's one we got also uh, uh, FERC is uh, another one for the Tremont Dam on the West Wayham side which is it could be DP but for, we're regulated because of the energy with that one was used for energy so that's why it's under FERC and it's the state they go follow the same regulation as the DP does uh, same thing annual uh, they come out and they inspect these the dams plus we have actually even another the state comes out and inspects all the culverts under the roads roadways over there and stuff like that we got a few spots they come out and inspect um, also DP a uh, fuel uh, station actually uh, he should that's one of the mandates the PD has too they have that uh, you have to have third-party inspections over there and make sure you know all your uh, monitor and make sure no fuels leaking into the ground and all that stuff so that's part of there uh, on the state side we're looking probably at uh, the elevators for both buildings uh, they're regulated state you know has to come and we have to pay for the inspections and uh, that's one of the things that I've cut as far as the elevator maintenance what so far on out of this budget and that's all which uh, sticking to is our state inspections our annual one-year inspections at this time uh, now also now we got our fire district with uh, mandates as far as uh, sprinkler systems uh, Tremont nails part of that and all that and fire extinguishers in the buildings and stuff like that they get uh, you know we got to fire the mass state codes on that and they have to be inspected annually uh, there's this there's things that uh, we get charged for 
even like on Tremont by the fire district as far as you know uh, for just having the water line we got dry systems in the in the Tremont nail and stuff and we get in the sprinkler systems in here too but uh, just for because you have a six inch line out there you get it's a six hundred dollar fee if you have a four inch line you get you know a four hundred dollar fee I tried getting them waived and uh, there's there's no waivers at the fire district there's things that I would like to work you know what I mean is it's these these guys are they want the, they said he told me the town's their best customer so uh, building something like that we're not really using that cost me seventeen hundred dollars a year to to do there's some things that I know you're looking into but this is this is the things that maybe we could try to you know send a letter to them hey look can you be easy, uh, you know can we have some waivers or it, it put that in front of the town or something I'm not sure you know I'm just new at this but there's a couple of things here. And we also have the personnel mandate stuff as far as hydraulic license, CDLs and all that, DOT physicals, stuff like that that comes contractual, but we still have to, there, it's regulations that we, the town has to comply that we have our DOT, you know, the hydraulics, we're all licensed. You know, we used to be exempt years ago from all DOT regulations, but now we're not. We have to have our physical cards and that all cost, cost the town money too. I hope that's enough for mandate stuff. All right. Just real quick. And so that on those situations, the town is picking up the bill to maintain their, their licensing, et Yeah, cetera, that's et in the contractual, That's in yes. contractual. That's okay. contractual, Thank yes. You. That's very nice of the town. I just had to say that. Mm -hmm. But that's the mandates. So I don't know where you okay, want to go thanks. from there. <laughs> Do you want to say anything else about the budget, or shall we take a quick look and see what other questions we have? I'm going to ask the same question about the um, <coughs> personnel here. The staffing that we're seeing here, are these all currently staffed positions? Do we have people in place here? Okay, hold on. Let me get okay. the file out. I think there's one extra position that we have, which is the heavy equipment operator slash mechanic. That's a future position. Okay. Everything else is uh, is filled. You'll see we're down from four to three, four persons uh, in this budget. And when you go through it, you'll have the municipal maintenance director, the, the three, four persons, and two support staff of an admin and a pure support staff. Uh, so when you go through this and you take out the, the custodians and stuff, you essentially see, uh, besides just the mechanics and such, how many people or how little people you have to go out and well, about. Because let me ask the question, and then you can give me, to which I already know the answer. With this staffing, is it adequate to staff the department? Me personally? Yeah. No. Thank you. I don't think that's a surprise. I think yeah. everybody who's been paying any attention understands that we don't have enough people but all you've added in Derek is a uh, heavy equipment operator mechanic yeah if you see um, we've done a heavy equipment operator slash mechanic and we've also tried to I'm really looking to budget some seasonal personnel as well on there um, you know that that amounts not gonna really get us much but it's something Overtime looks low. It is, the, is that, given the um, snow and ice and, and the other hours we do, does that come that, up? That's different. The snow and ice that, is that a separate. That goes under the snow separate, and ice budget. Yep. That's just what I want to make sure. Okay, thanks. And we've, as you know, we've cut down on a lot of the overtime, specifically um, some of the, the beach cleaning and the trash pickup on the weekends. That saved uh, close to $30,000 right there. So, um, Dave's been doing everything to try and save as much overtime, and it's not just him, but the um, a policy decision, if you will, and it's resulted in less services to the taxpayers. So I would say again, he's we're giving him the direction; he's making it happen at our direction. No, I. He is one of the departments that has had some of the DEP mandates, especially for stormwater, for, for the cleaning of, uh, of certain items. And, uh, yeah, I'm just really, Dave is, uh, even though he's been on since July, it's, uh, it seems like it was yesterday because things are going so fast. I've appreciated all his help, and uh, I'm going to let him go because he knows his department.
Did you did you want to start with the mandates since you were right on it well, with him? Well, you heard me say that I was awkwardly stumbling around that, but that that is the bigger picture, and it, it's for further down the road. Obviously, it's not this year's budget, but there are things that at some point we just have to say, no, we can't do that. I'm sorry. So. Yeah, why don't we start with the, the DEP first. Uh, uh, stormwater regulations that were mandated uh, that you're supposed to be cleaning your catch basins twice a year. And there's all kinds of uh, paperwork to fill out as far as even actually I, I, I went to a little bit of seminar on one of these things. And it's huge. They, they, they're starting to do audits to the town. And conservation is supposed to be part of this stormwater. Uh, Board of Health. Uh, they have they come after all these departments and you're supposed to have all these records of how many t you're, when you're cleaning them uh, you're supposed to be checking these outfalls and testing testing the waters and stuff like that with a, a small staff like that it, it, it's pretty much impossible what they're asking for and then what's coming down the road is what we do with our sweepers uh, the pile itself they consider this hazardous material that you know it, it picks up oils in the antifreezes from the asphalt roads we're picking this up so it's in this material which we're sanding and you, you know you, you have to put the stuff down for public safety and then and when you clean it up now they consider this a hazard to me uh, I would like to uh, actually put something in my budget for testing these piles because when they come down to do actually we already got fined in the past from DOP and we had to buy these uh, rain barrels and such just to get out of the huge fine. This was actually a Mark Andrews thing before Derek, and it cost us quite a few bucks to just to, to get out of trouble with these with the DEP because it was we weren't reporting in the on time and stuff like that. Uh, besides that, we got the DEP on the Parker Mills Dam, also, um, which there that's this uh, testing and everything they have to the, we have to have engineering come down and and then not not that I can just I can inspect it and, and monitor the dam but you have to have engineered reports to DP stating that you know this guy was qualified with hydraulic testing of the you know in, in checking and metering and everything on that on that pot so that's one we got also uh, uh, FERC is uh, another one for the Tremont Dam on the West Wayham side, which is, it could be DP, but for, we're regulated because of the energy, where that one was used for energy, so that's why it's under FERC. And it's the state, they go follow the same regulation as the DP does. Uh, same thing, annual, uh, they come out and they inspect these, the dams. Plus we have actually even, a, a, the state comes out and inspects all the culverts under the roads, roadways over there and stuff like that. We got a few spots. They come out and inspect. Um, also, DEP, our fuel uh, station. Actually, uh, he should, that's one of the mandates the PD has, too. They have that. Uh, you have to have third party inspections over there and make sure, you know, all your uh, monitoring, make sure no fuel's leaking into the ground and all that stuff. So, that's part of there. Uh, on the state side, we're looking probably at uh, the elevators for both buildings. Uh, they're regulated. State, you know, has to come and we have to pay for the inspections. And uh, that's one of the things that I've cut as far as the elevator maintenance what so far on, out of this budget. And that's all we're uh, sticking to is our state inspections, our annual one-year inspections at this time. Uh, now also, now we've got our fire district with uh, mandates as far as uh, sprinkler systems, uh, Tremont Nails part of that and all that. And fire extinguishers in the buildings and stuff like that. They got, uh, you know, we got to fire the mass state codes on that and they have to be inspected annually. Uh, there's, there's, there's things that uh, we get charged for, even like on Tremont by the fire district as far as, you know, uh, for just having the water line. We got dry systems in the, in the Tremont Nail and stuff and we get in the sprinkler systems in here too. But uh, just because you have a six inch line out there you get, it's a $600 fee. If you have a four inch line, you get, you know, a $400 fee. I tried getting them waived and uh, there's, there's no waivers at the fire district. There's things that I would like to work, you know what I mean? It's, it's these, these guys, are, they want, the, they say, he told me the town's their best customer. So uh, building something like that, we're not really using, that cost me $1,700 a year to, 
to do there's some things that I know you're looking into but this is this is the things that maybe we could try to you know send a letter to them hey look can you be easy uh, you know can we have some waivers or it, it put that in front of the town or something I'm not sure you know I'm just new at this but there's a couple of things here and we also have the personnel mandate stuff as far as hydraulic license CDLs and all that DOT physicals stuff like that that comes contractual but we still have to there it's regulations that we the town has to comply that we have our DOT you know the hydraulics we're all licensed you know we used to be exempt years ago from all DOT regulations but now we're not we have to have our physical cards and that all cost cost the town money too I hope that's enough for the mandate stuff. All right. Guess real quick. And so that on those situations, the town is picking up the bill to maintain their, their licensing, et Yeah, cetera, that's et in the contractual, That's in yes. contractual. That's okay. contractual, Thank yes. You. That's very nice of the town. I just had to say that. Mm -hmm. But that's the mandates. I don't know where you okay, want to go thanks. from there. <laughs> Do you want to say anything else about the budget, or shall we take a quick look and see what other questions we have? I'm going to ask the same question about the um, <coughs> personnel here. The staffing that we're seeing here, are these all currently staffed positions? Do we have people in place here? Okay, hold on. Let me get okay. the file out. I think there's one extra position that we have, which is the heavy equipment operator slash mechanic. That's a future position. Okay. Everything else is uh, is filled. You'll see we're down from four to three, four persons uh, in this budget. And when you go through it, you'll have the municipal maintenance director, the, the three, four persons, and two support staff of an admin and a pure support staff. Uh, so when you go through this and you take out the, the custodians and stuff, you essentially see, uh, besides just the mechanics and such, how many people or how little people you have to go out and well, about. Because let me ask the question, and then you can give me, to which I already know the answer. With this staffing, is it adequate to staff the department? Me personally? Yeah. No. Thank you. I don't think that's a surprise. I think yeah. everybody who's been paying any attention understands that we don't have enough people but all you've added in Derek is a uh, heavy equipment operator mechanic yeah if you see um, we've done a heavy equipment operator slash mechanic and we've also tried to I'm really looking to budget some seasonal personnel as well on there um, you know that that amounts not gonna really get us much but it's something Overtime looks low. It is, the, is that, given the um, snow and ice and, and the other hours we do, does that come that, up? That's different. The snow and ice that, is a that separate. That goes under the snow separate, and ice budget. Yep. That's just what I want to make sure. Okay, thanks. And we've, as you know, we've cut down on a lot of the overtime, specifically um, some of the, the beach cleaning and the trash pickup on the weekends. That saved uh, close to $30,000 right there. So, um, Dave's been doing everything to try and save as much overtime, and it's not just him, but the um, a policy decision, if you will, and it's resulted in less services to the taxpayers. So I would say again, he's we're giving him the direction; he's making it happen at our direction. You know, I know you mentioned that with the police department, we're two years in arrears on the contract negotiations, as far as municipal maintenance where are we in same boat or one of the laborers portion we are um, the we brought their contract through for two years so that officially expired on July 1 so now they're roughly six month, months months in arrears the four persons are um, are the two a year so called two and a half years in arrears and the four persons also includes the um, four persons from the water pollution control which is an interesting session when you're bargaining for essentially two entities Anybody? I hate to pick on small items Dave thank you very much for coming uh, advertising what is, what is your advertising budget 
advertising budget. See that <laughs> this year, uh, this fiscal law, okay, we're looking for the fifteen. No, just stuff like that. what are you what are you doing with the advertising? No, uh, hold on, sit. Give me two seconds. I'll we'll dig through the advertisement. Um, mostly, it's that uh, the cemeteries we got uh, the brush invitation for bids, such as that. Any revenue from any sources outside? Uh, just the cemeteries. Just the cemeteries. Yes. No, it doesn't come to me, no. It doesn't come to me, no. You see your last line, it says monument to the That also some of the position as well because of the work. The revenue that's coming in is also, well, in some cases. Yeah, I don't, this nothing comes out. We don't have nothing in this that funds us at all for the cemeteries. Yeah, cemetery commissioners last year, um, uh, their chair said no to it and said that um, it wa they wanted it under their direct control and that um, since they hadn't voted on it, they, I think it was a $15,000 article. So I think it'd be interesting uh, if we brought the cemetery commissioners or their chair in to discuss the, the revenues and going, going forward as part of the budget process because, you know, we have an we have an obligation to to take care of the those persons in the in the cemetery and their loved ones that are visiting, and uh, I I don't see how we effectively accomplish it with this budget. You know we we've been at this a couple of times and 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 my theory's always been you have the equipment and municipal maintenance to maintain the cemetery. It's in the municipal maintenance, so therefore it would make better sense for that money to be. A town meeting appropriated to municipal maintenance to take care of it so we've had that in the past where right. so we, we probably do need to have cemetery commissioners in and try to have this discussion before yep. town meeting thank you their meeting tonight four right across the hall down, down one level well, we're like that. <laughs> not today ready to snow and ice <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Um, and this is off a of year 1215 budget. Um, I can find it here. You got a line municipal maintenance and public buildings went from $659,000 in 13 down to 371 in 14, going up to 566 in 15. Which one are we now looking at? Snow and ice now? What you have for the FY13, if you're looking at the FY13 budget, the, that was actual expenditures, which would have included any of the expenditures for the storms and such that were, even if we get reimbursed by FEMA, when we do the actual expenditures, we show everything on there. So anything that even if it were, um, even if they had monies in So it's not for, a net number? No. Okay. So that's the, the actual, and you'll see... Uh, the 371,453, it's, it's not enough. Then that's for the FY14 budget. And now if you're looking at the FY15, that's what we're requesting to put on there. And if you, I mean, you can go through the lines if you want to and go th and see which ones have changed. And I think that would be the, the appropriate action to try and determine. One of the big ones, as you'll see, is if you go down, you'll see the electricity, then propane, the fuel oil, natural gas, increase on the cost of natural gas. The you'll see some of the sewer. Repair and maintenance of building, although the request has been 100000 I have budgeted 40000 up from seventeen. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to put some money into our buildings. Uh, you know, and not just borrow um, uh, every single time, unless we're going to do a 
huge article to borrow, borrow to fix all our buildings at once. We need to have some sort of maintenance budget in our <coughs> municipal maintenance department. As you go down further, the gas, diesel, gas and oil, you'll see that there's a 15,000 increase from FY14. To get, but the gas and oil costs haven't gone up like that. I mean, of the, of the raw material. For it itself, no, but you'll see that we're actually, we're, we're expending more than we planned for FY14. So unless we just don't send the people out, we have to spend the money on it. And don't forget, that includes generators, when generators have to be run and things such as that. So, so is, is the projected 14 under budget, are you going to spend more than the 371? Okay, we're, our projection is to bring it in under bu on budget and actually make some cuts as the Department of Revenue has requested. But it's not enough to provide services. So we're trying to get even some of the small things done. If you look at our town with its, with its uh, you know, miles upon miles of road, having $15,000 in road materials is, uh, is it's, it's not enough. So we've upped that to 30000 Repairs and maintenance of vehicles. Our vehicles are not getting any younger. We've increased that by 10,000. And one of the big ones is outside contractors. You'll see going from 22,850 to 6540. And as we can't hire new people and such, it's uh, in a way it's cheaper to use outside uh, outside contractors. And Dave can also tell you what some of the things they're used for. On the outside contractors, uh, we have. Uh, as far as everything's at ABC disposal, uh, we have uh, exterminators, ele elevator companies, refrigeration companies, uh, fire inspection people. Uh, we use, uh, yeah, even uh, that's respirator, that's all dumpster people, and uh, bonds, tree surfaces things of that nature that we have. There's sweeper companies out there, there's catch basin companies out there that we haven't been using any of this at the town. That's one of the mandates, the regulation is that we only have one catch basin thing and if, if that thing ain't manned 24, you know, every, you know, every day a year that we can't do the required what we have to. We'd have to use outside contractors to do it. You'll also to meet see the regulations. You also see in the past we'd pulled from the um, from waterways and such for the cleaning of the beaches into municipal maintenance budget $25,000 at a time. We didn't do it last year. We're not doing that this year. So those costs are being absorbed by municipal <coughs> maintenance fully. Does it, does it make sense to, to push it off? Should we be overspending this year? Should we spend it more this year? We can't do it. We've already we've already made this budget. There's no extra revenue, and the Department of Revenue has uh, has asked that we cut our budget by five hundred thousand dollars. So we can't overspend. So you're going to cut this year? Can yes. we can we can we say we not we're not going to save the five hundred thousand dollars? We're just going to spend it. <laughs> huh? I mean, all they've done is said that we said that this is our this is a cut from our budget of a, of five hundred thousand bucks. We cannot say that. No, not an option. And I wasn't. Oh, I, the, the, the laugh was more my, me picturing saying that to the. Uh, <laughs> the to well, you the made DOR a case director. for the fact that by not spending it, we're going to be spending more next year. Does not it will not. Will not. Uh, work. Well, this is the same the same thing as far as what we've cut. Like, yeah, I've cut. Uh, all, there's no generator maintenance, no elevator maintenance. Uh, we I had to cut everything out of it to get it through this year. And even our maintenance of our vehicles, there's no servicing. There's nothing. There's no money there to, to service this stuff. So it becomes that if I don't take care of this stuff next year, you know, we're going to be in trouble. We, we ain't going to be able to do our job. Bonnie? I just had a little... Thing. What is the significant change in alarms? What is that? Something oh, that's to, um, you can go on. Actually, that was for, because uh, our, our system, that's, that's at the barn itself. I wanted to put into camera systems. Uh, this is something that I get, I get the call, okay, and either where it's contractual, that we're sending people down here. I mean, I've had, th these things are back in the 70s, the, the, the things are falling off the walls, the alarm goes off. 
notify the police department call you have to go out there and check see if your buildings uh, secure so that's what I was uh, a quote actually to to get some cameras put in there that I don't have to that the police can monitor it and themselves and I don't have to Is that's one thing off one my location that's just my building yes okay. and actually we already updated the alarms in the town hall okay. so that's for us and if we're looking into security for the for this building too that hasn't been addressed yet yeah, because when you, if uh, if Ms. Renard's not the one to be able to go out, it is four hours overtime just for somebody to walk around that building. So, I was just yeah. curious. It was a significant chain. I figured it was something important, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or we were just being funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, you got it. I just also want to finish up with last year um, when municipal maintenance came before this board. Mr. Gifford walked in with a list of things that under the budget he couldn't do. This, it, he was very aware of the fact. Everyone walks around complaining about, why, again, why things aren't done. This goes to that little bit of pushback. Why do we have these things? Well, because we can't afford them. And he brought in a two-page list of things that were not being done around town. And, and it was appreciative because with this budget, it's not going to improve. We're still going to have roadside litter. Broken guardrails are not going to be replaced. Uh, problems with the catch basin cleaning that may have to be rectified because of uh, signage, potholes, dirt roads in disrepair, um, insufficient staffing for the amount of vehicles in, in, in bad weather, um, not cutting back vegetation. The list goes on and on. And now, thank you, I've just added to it, no maintenance of generators, elevators, and vehicles. At some point, people have to realize what we're giving up in services. These are things that should be being done, and we can't afford to do them. There's so. even more. I mean, this is a, even a burden on the staff itself. Like, it is a situation yesterday that uh, we only had four, four trucks outstanding yesterday after, after the storm. The hide, we have two hide companies. Uh, sorry, too tired. We have to go home, and that's what they tell me. And so now we, so our staff has to stay an additional four, four or five hours after the storm just trying to get the main drags done, secondary, you know, it's just some. We didn't hit all the roads last night because we were here over 36 hours straight. And, but this, they don't, the people don't uh, know that, uh, that it, it burdens the staff also, just the, the cutbacks, because now you don't have the equipment to do it or the staffing. It takes as long to do so, do Which the job. Which brings us into snow and ice. So, Jeff, right. go ahead. Yeah, actually, I had a question because it kind of ties back to this department. And, and what I was wondering is how many sanding routes do you have versus uh, how many sanders do you have? I got them all uh, set up into zones, and I believe I'm at 14 zones in town. But that so these four trucks, they just, they go, they, they'll take three zones. Okay, you're doing one, two, three, four. Should be, uh, we, we used to have uh, nine sanders back in the day. You know, mm -hmm. as, as the years have been going on, we just keep going down, 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 and staffing. We have five trucks. One that, one's down with a, a major electrical issue, wiring harnesses that we have, you know, it's, now we have to get approval. So everything gets delayed, and you get to order stuff. And so it, it's, the truck's been down for longer than what I'd like to see it. But uh, even that, we're not staffing. We only have two truck drivers, so we're staffing them with heavy equipment operators, uh, foremen, uh, whoever we got. My uh, Tava Master's been they're running plows with us. We're, we're using any line, any people and anything right now to try to get the job done. Yeah, well, that's what I was trying to get at. It that I, so you have four operating <laughs> sanders, right? Right now, yeah. All right, and then you would supplement that with. Two others, you said? Right now, well, if, if I, right now I had five. That's all we could get find was two hides that would come on board. Right. I, would, I would get ten guys if they would uh, come to the town. But even the guys complaining now, $110 ain't enough. I can go to the state for 140 So why do I want to work for Wayham? Mm -hmm. So either we got to up our rates on that, which there goes your snow and ice budget back up again to... For those of us who don't understand, uh, you know... ICs. What is a hide? What is a what? What did you say? You call it a hide? A what? Hired. Hired. Sorry, oh, I got a head cold. I've been. I had the flu, so. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I you, contractor. Yeah. Thank you. So you split those. 
you have uh, people that are able to drive the truck then uh, you have s six on the books plus the foreman six on the books oh that's on the people yeah I mean your laborers don't drive them <coughs> laborers drive the one tons and stuff yeah. like that the mechanic six, doesn't drive six, I'd imagine mechanic's during got a, a CDL also he's the master right. mechanic slash heavy but during a snowstorm he's probably back at the garage right uh, this one no you jump you you're in and out of when we, when we're out plowing everything. We move machine machines go out and everything. So okay. we, uh, me myself, I'm in loaders and stuff. And all right, but one of your heavy equipment operators, someone's got to work the loader, right? Or do they? Load yeah, one own? of them's supposed to be in the loader. Like I said, most of the time they're on a on a plow route, and I'm running a loader out back or something. Okay. Um, because I, I I look at that as the the size of the department is. You know, it, it, can you do snowplow operations? You know, what are you doing for? I mean, we got to, we're using high contractors to, right. to supplement what we can't do. Which, uh, on an average, a storm like this, you're looking uh, just the high contracts themselves. You know, seventy thousand. You know, seventy and eighty thousand dollars on a storm this size, just for the contractors. Um, yeah, no, I'm aware of that <coughs> of, of that cost. Um, I just wanted to see if we had enough equipment for the people that we had, or vice versa. We you know, everything still equipment. I mean there's a few pieces hanging around in there but I'm using like I said any any kind of resource I water department guys or whoever we can uh, get and fill these trucks we're, we're using not that it's a, a lot I, I even the harbor masters guys too you know oh sorry I didn't want to do it this one you know when you don't have your standard guys it's a it's a flip of a coin if you can if you can get somebody to fill fill that seat and all and that's just the one ton stuff you know the CDL guys that's you might as well forget that you know if that truck I, I've had Santa sitting in there if you, if you can't run it you can't run it yeah um, just takes long to do the job so I guess that's the question is um, <coughs> do we have more equipment than we have staff vice versa? yes okay. yes so is that yeah this kind of I'm trying to get at that yeah, yeah. how much in in the the number of routes I, you've got it in zone so you can kind of flip a zone back and forth between between trucks so that I see I understand that um, and you can prioritize those um, are the zones in priority or are they in in geographical <coughs> area geographical okay so you don't have a zone that's go go hit the cul-de-sacs no what, the well how I did is geographically if, if it's worse in West Wayham I shift people from uh, say this is zone one I'll shift them from zo the closest zone zone two shift a couple guys oh hey let's get over there one's worse than two or vice like that instead of taking guys from onset and yep. shipping them over here the closest truck to help out that's how we usually work it well being from West Wareham you you can keep as many people <coughs> as you want yeah. um, can I just go back a little bit I, I kind of messed up a little bit um, chapter 90 funds they don't appear here at all um, is any of chapter 90 used to supplement this no we use the chapter 90 it's for if we have road paving projects and we would hire people for for that it wouldn't be our okay staff. so none of that's you don't you don't try to charge <laughs> off any of this to the chapter 90 no how about the engineering well, since, since you brought that up that's that's something that's that's the only really big road maintenance we should uh, is, there's really nothing in here for uh, okay I want to pave uh, County Road we don't have I don't, that's no that should be in this budget but it's not that's something that's we have to totally rely on chapter 90s monies and that's something that you have to go get approved for get you know this it's a time game too they, they as far as to get approved for it and they might not approve you okay <laughs> now I don't really think yet that's too much money for that road and they well, might what about the you. soft cost uh, the, the in, what about the engineering up ahead it is engineering everything goes I've been using chapter 90 funds so if I want to engineer that road County Road you hire engine, it out I apply for it. I apply for it yeah tie it out yeah I tie it up yeah okay. we don't have a town engineer <laughs> yeah okay so um uh all right because i'm a fan of of it's just like um tom said you know uh getting on a, a borrowing even to, to to just to move ahead with some of the some of the paving it's just it's just like police cruises uh you know you don't buy them you get hit you know i used to i i always use this thing that you know when i was having my tonsils out i don't know how many years ago they told me you know this stuff if you didn't like to eat that just blow back into the mask and uh, I just got double back, you know, when I went to gas for breath. And that's the same thing when we, as we're not doing the road. But um, so, um, all right. I just wanted to understand that. So all Chapter 90s is uh, is hired out, and it's separate from this. And, 
Yeah, and if, uh, if I can, one of the interesting things some of the towns have been doing, uh, I think Sandwich is going to propose it. Yarmouth just did it. On top of the Chapter 90 funds, they've uh, they've now done a um, an override for just just mm-hmm. to repair roads, a million dollars a year dedicated to redo the roads and, and fix them up because they've realized that the Chapter 90 funds with the, with the reductions and such over them, it's not enough to, to keep up with it. Mm-hmm. So instead of us just throwing a bunch of cold patch on it and moving to the next spot, <coughs> they're, they're, they're actually able to repair them. So. Okay, thanks. That's good. good questions, also. Um, one from the floor, Mr. Slavin. Just so you also want to say, on chat 90 funds, the way the would you does. would you excuse me? Sure. Would you come up to the table and use the microphone? So. I've been at several meetings where they talked about the Chapter 90 funds. Chapter 90 funds, unfortunately, because the state's been late certifying, getting them to the towns, they have an issue. They can't go out and contract for anything until they actually have the funds. So we keep falling behind. And also, the way the state does it, we can't go ahead and borrow on those anticipated funds until we actually have the funds. So it's a two-edged sword. So David will have these different projects lined up. And when Mr. Gifford was here last year, and we did it before when it was on capital planning, we had projects still from 2008 still on the books because we just didn't have enough funds coming through. So even though David makes plans, until the state actually passed the budget, certifies the Chapter 90 funds, which last year, everybody remembers, they were holding back, I think, a couple hundred thousand dollars for quite a while. Yeah. You can't do anything. And some of these projects could be exceed that dollar amount that's, uh, that's been authorized, and you're still sitting there. So you have to understand that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more item. Uh, when you utilize employees from other departments, such as Harbor Master or uh, Sewer Department, for plowing and snow removal, is that does that come out of your budget? No, that comes out of the snow and ice budget. Out of the snow and ice budget. Yes. All right. Thank you. And so it doesn't hit. There's isn't charged back to the other departments, so it doesn't cause a deficit in their lines. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that there is that cooperation going on. That's very good. Yeah, there's probably one of the things I think people would be surprised about is how much cooperation there is, even when we're we're fighting. Let's call it fighting for the same same dollars, or if you will, but. People are, they are working well together, and uh, I, I appreciate that, so. Good managers. That's them, yeah, they're great department heads, so. Thank you, anyone else? Ms. Derek, I have a question for you, <laughs> which goes to just planning. I see this is a significant increase in the snow and ice budget. Mm -hmm. And it's. Because you're tired of getting short, caught short and trying to pay it out of free cash later on? Yes, so we, we raise it on the recap, and eventually you have to actually bring those into the budget and vote those those deficits forward. So, um, you know, we probably easily could have gone another another 125 to 150 thousand to bring it in line to a true three-year average, especially after this year. We know we've had the one one light year. Um, where uh, even though it snowed just a little bit, we we'd reached our budget, but it's um, we're probably looking anywhere from, I would say four hundred to four hundred fifty thousand is really a true true average. So there's no way that we're not going to spend this much money anyway. It gets stuck. Oh, uh, uh, you know, there's um, unless we have another unusual year. This is probably what we're looking at. I mean, the last storm, last two storms are easily easily a quarter million dollars altogether. I would say. Yeah. And, and those are the big I ones. Snow. Yeah. Well, if if I had the the perfect world, what I do with <coughs> snow plowing is, um, uh, you know, we would come up with a formula, say that we we're going to do the average over four years or five years or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. and just stick to it. That's it. And uh, then if there, you know, the fear is you don't, you're not going to use it, but of course you can, because then you can go back and fix your sanders and buy plows for the next year, you know, because you, no. you, you, you got to watch out that we have a tough town accountant no. who, uh, 
until the first snow falls really uh, will not allow any of the repairs and it has to make sure that that vehicle is used exclusively for snow snow and ice removal and there's there's no uh, there's really been no gray area which has been a change and uh, it's fallen on Dave to be part of that change well, so. you, how about the what's the Bureau of, the, uh, of Accounts ruling on that that's what they that's their yes. their uh, what their guidelines for it so we're going pretty black and black and white by it because we we would go through and you know fix the sand as the spread as the you know ideally they the should be fixed before the first uh yeah. first snowfall and such but so yeah. it's um we're trying to get on the better side of the department of revenue so okay all right can i just ask my question about whether he covers this <laughs> sure i'm just curious if you clarify um, right after the the uh, municipal maintenance, the street lights. Does municipal maintenance control these repairs on those street lights? Yes. You do. Okay. Can I ask my question? Then? Go ahead. Is it near your home? <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Um, this situation with the period street lights. I mean, come on. It's seventy-five thousand dollars to repair them and only fifty thousand dollars to run them. Um, have we talked about? you know, turning this over to Cedar or, and in getting a plan, maybe. I know these things were put in a, in a grant in the first place, and Dick Paulson would love me for saying this. This is what you get when you spend grant money, and then you have to maintain it later. Um, so have we thought about a plan to remove them, replace them, do something besides keep dumping money into lights that are really, really pretty but are costing us too much money? We just had a major overall of how many units? Uh, that would have been 50. 50 units. 50 units. CETA paid for part of it. We were able to use money from uh, the the Onset Ave uh, account, I yeah, believe. Yeah, we had some, uh, some money in there, too, that we... But there's no way to turn this over to CETA. It's just not what they what what they would do. It'd be... Um, they have to do it as part of grants and such as that. Right. So I wouldn't see that. I mean, I That's what I mean. I mean, is anybody looking into a, into grants? I'm like, well, we just did downtown. Right. I mean, there's going to be a choice here somewhere along the line. I mean, they're really pretty. I, I was a child when they were when they were installed. I remember them doing the whole walkway and blah, 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 blah. But is there a point where we make a choice and say, we're just not going to operate them anymore. We're going to turn them off or we're going to do something else. Because that's, it's just an awful lot of money. It just, we keep dumping into it. And I'm just got, I just want to, you know, cut your losses and say, forget about it. We'll do something else. Uh, on that note, the, the period lights ain't needed. So they only charge us a flat fee. We're saving a ton of money. Um, um, just having them lit, the, the power company, they just charge us a flat rate. So if you've seen the real numbers, what them period lights would cost you, it would blow you out of the, out of the water. Good question to ask, Bonnie. Just now curious. we know. Okay, there. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> Just curious. Okay. And there's there's so many. I mean, people are. Uh, as far as they said, they're so pretty, but they're, they've been used to them for so long, having that light in front of the house. And now, like that, here's for security reasons. You know, the police department. All oh, now these people can't get seen. It, it, you know, everything goes up. Oh, now they can. You know go look in your car at night if they got their car parked out in these nice lights and stuff so I mean that would be a tough sale trying to it used to light up the trash cans at night so you could bring your house <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> I'm good I'm good I'm Everybody good. good thank you and thank you for getting us through these last two storms and there'll be no more snow for the rest of the yeah, season. Yeah, I hope so. But that's what, Saturday, another one, Monday, another one, we'll get another dusting or something on Saturday, so. And that actually... I blame the town administrator for all the snow. Start packing up and I'll just make... <laughs> Remember, I drive a Prius. <laughs> if, it's, if it's over 2,000 pounds, I probably can't drive it. <laughs> talked about pushback with a member of this committee um, earlier who was from Western Mass and that was his comment we just don't plow the roads people learn to drive in snow so that's just one of those that that comes down to safety <laughs> issues and what makes sense and I think this community has decided that we want well plowed roads yeah, timely fashions yeah. they don't need to be plowed so that they can get to the mall because people are getting smart they're closing the mall we're not we'll have late openings so I think we're kind of getting the hint that this is New England we get snow deal with it stay in if you don't have to go out so I, I think, think you guys it, have done a good job with that. I think people would be amazed by the calls the municipal maintenance receives two in the morning the plow just came <laughs> down the road and only did part of it what are you guys doing oh wait it's coming down the other side now 
we're okay. I have to go to work. My road has not been plowed. You need to get here right now. Um, and it's and I understand you all know it. They're they're, they're taxpayers you know and such, but. We listen There's, to those people. Yeah. Really, what you should listen to is thank you for doing a good job. You know yeah. what your job is, and you do it. Just. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't just Dave with the flu. It was about half the half the crew going out there. So yeah, I really appreciate appreciated their efforts. Yes. So. Tom. Well, the, back to the toothache. What about the issue last year about not plowing, plowing private roads? <coughs> are we, are we going to be able to? get to the point where we can identify what's private and what's not private and what yeah, gets but it's loud. actually going to be a ballot question in April and it's going to be the residents and voters of this town to decide whether they would like to adopt the MGL to plow the private roads so that's going to be the main deciding factor so whatever the vote if the voters decide they wish well, to how are you up. betting on that coming out in this next year's budget um, I, I have never won any bet except that the Patriots are going to win the 2001 Super Bowl. That was a great turnout. But, so don't ask me to well, bet, uh, please. What does this budget reflect? Point. This budget reflects the current operations that we have right now. Okay. So. All right. I won't shake your hand, Mr. Flo. No. Enjoy. Yeah, that's good. Which makes me bring up the Germans. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. Thank, thank you, Dave. All right, Dave. All right. Take care, Dave. Appreciate it. Yeah, if you, I would like to introduce Mr. Dave Evans, the director of our EMS department. You will notice it should be on the one of the very last ones. Yeah, I think uh, you're going to see two things actually, and this is because I've really been going back and back and forth. It's something that we had spoken about before. I'm trying to figure it out. So if you see, there's the spreadsheet with the grid on it, departmental expense expense budget, and then you'll see the other one showing the employee the employees. You'll see a difference on the um, on the rate for sal for salary expenses or wage expenses. And one of them is we're really looking to do two things. One is uh, trying to plan for for certain contingencies that really shouldn't speak about on on the air, uh, but it involves with personnel whether they're coming, going, or um, and also there's all there's uh, part-time employees so that we're not doing everything <laughs> under overtime and picking that up with part-time employees. So that would be the that'd be the delta between the two items on there. The, um, the staffing levels would be the same, but again, you just see a difference in the part-time and the um, part-time on call and uh, one potential slight other item. So. And with that convoluted introduction, here's Mr. Evans. Okay, so the budget is basically the same other than the salaries, which Derek just explained. There's been a slight increase in some of the the vehicle maintenance actually it's we've uh last couple of years we've far exceeded what we've budgeted for vehicle repairs they've been in the repair facilities more times than they've been on the road one of the ambulances that we're running is a 2001 the other one's a 2006 uh they're just major breakdowns last couple of weeks we replaced a transmission on one of the trucks another one we have to replace the wiring harnesses because the uh a lot of uh, problems with the engines. You be driving down the road and the truck will stall on you. <coughs> It'll restart, but they've changed different parts and did different diagnoses with the uh, vehicle computer, and they finally determined that it's the actual wiring harness for the engine itself. So that's an $800 harness and the same amount in labor to replace it. And that was supposed to be done today, but they pushed that repair back. So. There's been a lot of vehicle repairs because of the age of the vehicles. We got approved at the last town meeting to lease the new ambulance. It's uh, due for delivery probably around April, and that'll help us with some, but we'll still have those two vehicles that we're running now. The vehicle that we're getting is replacing one the state took off the road to 99 that we haven't been able to run for a couple of years. Uh, in, it was either Last February or March, we uh, raised our ambulance rates, so that'll increase our revenues. 
we anticipate about two hundred thousand dollar increase so our revenues are more than covering the cost of operation and with these uh, personnel increases that we're doing we'll be able to uh, cover those expenses with our revenue our projected revenue for this year will be about 1.3 million dollars we've been running the last couple of years between 1 million and 1.1 million and our expenses are greatly under that like last year with excess revenue we turned in $245,000 to the general and it's been similar the last two or three years before that I mean, if, I don't know if you recall back when we were talking about the health care trust when we had to do that money Derek said we, we use $600,000 of EMS revenue to cover that so I just want to interrupt and maybe ask Derek a question though this is not an enterprise it's an offset receipt it's an offset yeah. receipt so in this budget doesn't include the benefits right the and with the we have eight or nine full-time employees in Wayham they have a list of calls that they'll respond to other calls they don't the one from my from the school actually was responded to by the fire department Wareham fire department first while we waited for the ambulance and again I'm not being critical on right. I'm appreciative that my life was saved on both occasions because of the response um, have we gone for an RFP for the billing yet uh, because the bill there are only a couple of co companies that do the billing right. in Massachusetts and you have to know what you're doing as some of you have pointed out um, but you know have you have you examined the we do I've, I've told the procurement officer several times that we need to go out to bid and we haven't yet okay um, and when you only have one ambulance up do you respond to mutual aid and if so why uh, because it is mutual aid and if they only have one ambulance they come help us and if we only have one we go to help them okay but then I mean has there ever been an instance where for instance you have gone on mutual aid to Marion and then been called I'm presuming that the right, reason I, mean, I, I waited 45 minutes was because there was no ambulance available there were clearly right and, if, and clearly mutual aid might have been tied up but and there are times when we have five calls at once and you can't be everywhere at once and going back to the fire department responses William fire will respond if it's a backup call they will send somebody out but if they're on the primary call with us if it's a heart attack on the primary call and they don't have a bit anybody in the station it's gonna take a while for them to get somebody in because they have a certain amount of people on staff that go on the truck so the st station's empty okay and then um, I guess one last one you usually respond in what I call the um, hospital on wheels which is not an ambulance right. and your qualification so we don't we can't bill for you doing that but if you got into the ambulance and drove the ambulance then you would have still one person right and if there's second calls and I'm on duty if we don't have staff calling the man it fully I go on the emails okay so um, I guess my question is why do you as a supervisor or a manager go anyway there are times because I am administrative and also a response person a lot of times you might need a second or third a paramedic or additional help depending what type of call it is and if you're a supervisor you still have to go supervise your people I mean they can function on their own without supervision but there are calls where they need extra hands and it's good to have an additional person there to, to oversee them okay so if it was a multi-car pile up on 24 or 25 or you know pick a pick a road that you would respond to um, I can understand that but going to a heart a one person heart attack why would we not have just the ambulance go minus you I mean I'm presuming that the people who are on the ambulance at the time that it responds to a heart attack know how to cope with a heart attack right but if you're 
doing CPR, you need two people to do that. Someone to do the chest and breathe and give medications and all that stuff, and then still someone to drive. So, and so let's not I, forget uh, crowd control. Yeah, and a lot of times, a person that needs help needs multiple people. If you go in the emergency room, there's five, six people around you. If you have something serious. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm not yeah. trying to be critical. I'm trying to see how we can use your expertise and your, um, you know, EMT paramedic, you know, your your certifications to better provide service without killing ourselves. Okay, and this is the fine line that, right. that we walk here because we try very hard to not get involved in day to day, but in order to look at bigger pictures and how everything fits in ultimately here for budget numbers, we have to kind of understand how things work. So it's a little bit on the day to day and how the workings of it, but you're trying to get a bigger picture. So when you send out an ambulance, there's only one person in the ambulance? No, there's two. There's two, okay. But, but one has to drive. One has to right. drive, yeah. and okay. one has to take care of the person. And, okay. And Unless if they have a serious a call with multiple people, and you, set the fir the guy might respond. Oh, so the person might respond with one, from home. No, is it? If if it's a second call, we need an additional ambulance. Right. They come from home, depending on where the call is. If we have two people coming in, one might go directly to the scene, right. and the other one comes and picks up the truck. Yeah. So that would explain why you go. Yeah, I mean, okay. if, if I'm on the road and I'm close to the call, I go direct. If I'm in the station, I wait to see if they get a crew. If not, I jump in the ambulance and take the ambulance. One last question. Um, they have model ambulances, and somebody asked this earlier, um, you know, not car shows, but, you know, emergency um, responder shows. Can you buy a used ambulance, which really hasn't been used except in shows. Comes, it well, comes back to one of the questions. Yeah, a demo. A demo. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can buy those they're, if they're available. I mean, sometimes they don't really build a lot of demos because they, they are expensive and they don't want to just build something and have it <coughs> on their lot just hoping that someone buys it. Right, but what I'm saying is, ha have you explored that? Because that might be a quicker way of getting a second ambulance. You are a you are a money maker, um, not you, but you know, your division. No, me. Um, and so to be able to get better equipment, a 2006 ambulance is, is ancient and beyond what we should be running on a, t on a now basis. So I know that it's, you know, the, the budget is the budget, but it, there ought to be a four or five year revolving plan to get a new ambulance every whatever period of time makes sense. And then keep rolling them forward and getting rid of the old ones. And I think that's what Derek has planned. We're putting the lease payment in my budget now, holding back some of that money mm -hmm. and making that lease payment. So on a regular basis, we'll be able to replace these vehicles. I mean, we still have to get authorization at town meeting, but the payment will already be in the budget. I have one more. What about um, uh, technology, keeping up with some of the technology that's going on? Are, are you interlinked with the uh, uh, electronic medical records now? Yeah, we've what been. What are we doing progressive that way? We've been doing electronic uh, reports for f probably 10 years. I mean, it's not, and we leave a copy <laughs> at the hospital, but it's also a web based program, so they can log in and see the, the calls, and they, they review them that way too, but we still leave a paper copy. We don't have the interface with our records in the doctor's office and the hospital like yeah. they're going through recently now, all those, the grants that are, I think but it, but it is progressive, I mean, it's out there. Right, we, we, we're a web-based program, and whoever we have access can see the reports. Is there any plan to? I mean, it's, and I, think that there's a wireless transfer, so you, you can, yep. but it's, it's not something that ambulances are doing right now. Okay. Yeah, you did a really good job of getting grants for your um, defibrillators last year. Are there any other grants out there that you're looking? We, we have a- that we're counting on the money for no. grants. We so submitted a federal grant in, in September, October for a, a new ambulance so we're just waiting and that's an extremely competitive program so we're waiting to see if we hear on that and we should hear 
the next three or four months. And then on those federal grants with the town our population, it's a 10% ma match. So looking at the price of what we just paid for that analyst, we're looking at like 21,000, 22,000. You'll get back if you win that grant. We, no, that's the town share. Oh, that's the town share. Oh, the, that's even better. Yeah, they, they, the federal government pays 90%. The town has to do a 10% match. Okay. But you won't know that until? Until we hear from, it's a Homeland Security grant. So we're holding off on? Um, well, we still have this one and then we have to pay for this one. We haven't got it yet. And it's a three year lease. And then we'll start the piece. Most of them have individual health plans. So our health insurance hit that the town pays is about 50,000. Okay. So we greatly cover it. So it's not it. a huge number that we're no. seeing that comes out of it. Okay, thanks, I'm sorry. I have a quick question. <clears throat> I understand about the, the revenues coming from the billing. But what's our experience with collections? Because I noticed that we had a huge amount that was in arrears, several, I don't know, well, uncollectible, if you yeah. will. That's yeah. because we've never written it off. And some of these go back 10, 12 years. Right, but I guess it's an overall picture. If you're saying I'm going to bill at 1.3, how much is that are we going to collect All right, I get a, as an average? I, I think what he's giving you is actually what we're going to collect. OK. That's so right. I think that. Right, last year. I mean, you have write-offs because you, I'll just run off numbers. You can bill a thousand dollars. Medicare says we pay six hundred, so you have to write off four hundred. So last year for fiscal 2013, we billed two million eighty-four thousand hundred twenty-two dollars, and our collections were one million seventy thousand nine hundred forty-one, with a write-off of eight forty-six. But that's because we bill what we bill and the insurance companies so tell you what they're going to pay for that call uh, actually 60, I, 60. Uh, we're well with write-offs you I mean it's kind, kind of how when you figure in the write-offs because what you can't do our collections are more like 90 percent because there's two different kinds of collections that I think that might just be above yeah, yeah. you understand that yeah, so if you deduct that 84,000, dollars $84, adjustments, right, because of insurance companies don't do it, and you can't, you can't go after it. <laughs> okay. Can I ask a question in conjunction with that? I mean, is, um, has your billing company uh, done any projections on how that's going to impact posit positively or negatively with the Affordable Care Act, where now insurances are going to have to adjust and be more in conjunction with each other? We're going to see an increase or, or a loss. I mean, there were plenty of people who didn't have insurance before, and right. you couldn't make them pay. Right. Now, well, with, well, when Massachusetts did it, mm -hmm. you have insurance, but a lot of them didn't cover it, uh, provide ambulance coverage. So they have basic insurance for the basic needs, but there's a lot of things that those plans do not cover. And like if you, if you have mass health, you go back, you, you build that thousand dollars, the state says, we're gonna give you $200, 250 bucks for that. Yeah, that's what I mean yeah. is, is the- uh, And mass health covers insurance. Some of these other ones, these connector, whatever they call them, don't cover. So you private bill the patients. Some of them do cover, but there's some that don't. So it, it, everybody's required to have insurance, but there's still people that don't have insurance because the fine is cheaper than the insurance. And if they do have insurance, it might not be a plan that covers a lot of things. Or there's such a great deductible on them. Yeah, that's what I was wondering if, if the billing company, if you kind of factored that into your projections. We, we've got a, 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 a slight increase, but it's not a major change because of what they cover and what they don't cover. Okay. Um, can I, the first question though, is this not allowed to be an enterprise fund? It had been an enterprise fund in the past and was changed back to an offset receipt. At the time when they were, uh, when they were running it as such, it didn't cover all of its costs. Okay. Now, what, how does it stand with mutual aid? For other communities are calling them in? Yeah. 
Uh, I think the uh, the joke from the Born Born Fire Department is you guys bought our last ambulance with the mutual aid we provided. Thank you. Or we bought it. So last year we did. Oh, let me just find that. You 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 saying you don't keep the billing for for work that you do if it's out of town? We do. Oh, you do. But it's when they come in to help us, that money goes back with them. We don't get any money for that. And last year, between vehicle breakdowns and the lack of manpower, we had to call in mutual aid 169 times. And if you figure an average uh, call of $387 in revenue, we lost almost $66,000 in revenue. Yeah, see, the, the, and the, the max lifespan on an ambulance, as far as I knew, was six years. E, yeah. Our new ambulance is a 2006. Yeah. Which our, we know we've been asking for new ambulances for the last five, six years. So you, you're, and you're saying you have two in one sitting, right? That's out of the state took off the road because yeah. of vehicle or structural right. issues. So, um, okay. And are we at the, what level are we billing at? EMT one, EMT two? Or, uh, we're depending what type of car we are. We're, we're primary level service and we bill at ALS rates. Oxygen or, service and everything. And okay. A lot of them roll it all together now for one fee covers everything except okay. mileage that's the insurance company you mean right um and then you have to make a decision whether you want to you know uh, accept that or you know, go with the deductible against the, well, the like i said with medicare and some they pay you what you get you there's right. no argument what private about companies <laughs> pay a lot of the bill 80 percent or 100 percent car insurance pays 100 percent and um when you uh, do you go to just to the one hospital or do you, uh, do you 99 percent the patient of our calls go to, to the town hospital we have certain things if it's a trauma related call we have to go to the trauma center the closest one to us is in Providence okay and that's one of the reason that we need the extra personnel we only run with two people on the truck so if you have a serious patient you need to have a third person and it's either call somebody in off duty from home if you can get them or Sometimes if it's a serious call in town, the fire department will provide a driver, but they're not going to give us somebody to go out of town for three hours. I would. And you go to the trauma center versus taking them to the in-town hospital and have them shift? No, shift because them. protocols say you have to go there. We can call helicopter if they're available, but sometimes, depending where they're coming from, it could be just as long as driving there yourself. All right. I mean, if, if I needed a trauma center and I was two blocks away from the hospital versus we would uh, love to, go to drive to 45 minutes I'd rather go to the hospital we would love to go to the closest hospital but yep. state law says you have to go to the trauma center um, and you said it, it, Derek it didn't cover the cost so is there any possibility to do that I mean you can't increase uh, have you looked at um, you know if we had a uh, X and Y, could we cover more calls? Could we not call in um, mutual aid so much? You know, we were talking about the budget thing. So, this is you know, one of those places where it seems to make sense to spend the money. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> realizing is getting more in, getting the ambulance yeah. on the yeah. road generates more income. Well, I guess, uh, I guess how many, how much was, how much of that mutual aid was due to downtime and lack of personnel versus how much probably, was due to probably equal uh, number right now. multiple calls? And know? with the, the personnel issues, we have, Eight full-time people, not counting me. Yeah. So that's two people on a truck for four shifts, and we've been down two full-time positions since September. There are two new people starting next week, so we've had six people to run all these calls, and they're right out straight. So when they get off, they're home recovering, or if they go home, go out to dinner, they have a beer or a glass of wine, they can't come back to help us. Mm -hmm. And you do have family events you have to go to, so those six people have been run right out straight and they get one out yeah no I'm not questioning and, that at all and, so, I mean, and, and I'm not questioning the callback yes, either I, I what I'm wondering is if if you know again how much of the lost calls are due to our own in-house issues versus multiple calls at once that right. we, we need to call in and the way we operate we have one man ambulance so if we have additional calls we call people in from home if they're available and we do have some on-call staff but they have full-time jobs, they're going to school, and they're not always available, and they have the same issues. So I think we have like eight or nine on-call people that are, three of those are, are pretty active, 
and the other ones can come when they're available. And is there any overlap between call, the call fire department and the and no, call we're a separate EMS? Department. Those are districts. They'll go on calls and assist well, if it's a high priority call. Yeah. Well, if I'm a, a, what I'm getting at is if I'm a, a if I'm a call firefighter, can I also be a call? Uh, EMS? Yeah, we do have people that are on both okay. on call and on sort of away him and, and on call for it seems EMS. like there'd be dual training there that that would be useful but um all right i'm sorry i didn't well, mean to tell good you. job that's fine oh, and i think one of the things that the um the chat they've built out the chassis and i think they're building out the rest of the ambulance and our delivery date is estimated in may i think, I think he i talked to him tuesday and i think he was talking it's looking more like maybe april late april follow up hey, first good news we've had just how about a follow-up on that is uh, is there an ambulance that we can rent from a private company while ours is down um i don't think we've, we've now we've been, been managing it's just when we have vehicle breaks down breakdowns we only have one vehicle and i think we'd have to have that here all the time and for the rental fee just having it there to stand by we know what that wouldn't is. be making it and with the 169 calls i mean that could be all calls on you have like five calls on one day or not have a back no I a agree. week or so but as a, and then there's a there's a, a safety aspect too is how much do what do I want to be do I want to know that there's only one ambulance for well the, we still can call me and yeah. the good thing is that Marion and Rochester they were on call departments and now they in November they started manning an ambulance so they have a EMT paramedic on a man truck now in, in those two towns that can come help us and we actually borrowed an ambulance from municipality. Yeah, it, it was late last year or middle of last year. Both of our trucks actually broke down at the same time. So we had a whole weekend that we had no ambulance. And the town of Marion EMS let us borrow one of their trucks. So they sent one of their trucks to us and then we manned it and housed it in our station for a couple of days. Okay. This is getting, you know, talking about the other towns. How does that work as far as, you know, in the accounting wise? Is we're doing a, a lot of covering for them too, as well. Am yeah, I we went to them, but a lot of that was because they were calling paramedics. Now right. that Marion and Rochester, we're still going over there, but not as much as we were. Okay. And that's only been two months. Now, if we do a call over there and it's actually a billable call. If we transfer somebody in our ambulance, no matter where we go, we bill it. Okay what if it's not a billable call or a we're not going to collect on this is there i mean is that going back to the town that it came from or we just kind of no we that? eat it because we're they eat that. they eat our Do, uh, that's what i'm asking i, I think the demographics yeah. in William and marion and rochester are a whole lot different than Wayham. so the chances of collecting are better for us than than for them okay hey When we talked about this, I think it was last year or the year before, about the um, whether or not it was, it was a good enterprise fund candidate. And while it may have been in, in some ways, the, the difference is like with the water pollution control, they actually control their revenue more so than, say, an ambulance service because ambulance service has state-mandated numbers. And, and so it was very difficult, especially when you start adding in the retirement, the benefits and all that, for them to cover the cost. So I think that at sometime that's why they went back to what you're talking about but it would be very difficult given the health care uh, direction we seem to be going that that uh, they could be a true enterprise fund and the, the thing point. with the water pollution control is they know how many customers they have well, so they can set the rates and we can't tell how many calls we may have yeah. right. Right. And if uh, with any enterprise fund, if there is a deficit in it, and this is the fun thing, the general fund has to make up that deficit. So, even though they're technically their own business, right? <laughs> Marilyn, I have a question. I want to go back to billing. You don't do your own billing. You no, we have a contract billing company. They get <laughs> they get a percentage of what the collection is. Okay. Um, and I know Medicare pays eighty percent, but you also. Most people on Medicare, and we have a high senior citizens population. Right. Um, they also have a secondary insurance. And I myself, as being on Medicare, I know that, for instance, in ambulance services, I'm usually, if I've ever had been transported or had my mother um, in an emergency situation, because this is all emergency, no transport. We don't do any scheduled okay. stuff. It's all emergency. So um, 
we were given what's called an ABM, which is an advanced beneficiary notice, which means we are liable for any difference that Medicare and our private insurance doesn't pick up. I, do you know whether or not your billing company um, utilizes this? Because you would have to, as a paramedic, either give it to the hospital to have them fill it out um, with their paperwork, or you would give it to have them. Yeah, I don't know if that applies to emergency calls or if it's just a routine. It does. Because we haven't seen that, if that's one of the newer that's laws. That's something we, we should look into, because an ABN will cover but, any costs that are, it'll come from the person who transported. It's called an yeah. advanced beneficiary notice. We do uh, build the balance, what Medicare doesn't, what they allow <laughs> and what they pay. We do build that balance. Right, but they don't have to pay you unless you gave them an advanced beneficiary notice. That's a legal loophole. I'll check with the billing company. I haven't heard that. Okay, because they would have to give you them, and you, you know, it's kind of hard. And I know when somebody. I know they came out with with to say, could you sign this? But whoever is with them, the guardian, or give it to the hospital when you drop them off. And then that pack of paperwork that they all have to sign. Right. I know they came out with something six or seven months ago that if they don't want us to bill them, that they want to be responsible for the bill themselves, not going through the insurance company, we have to give them that. Right. I don't know and if that's, that's the same thing. And this is the same thing, but it's people who are. Yeah, because if they don't want the insurance company to know that they have this ailment they want to, and they call an ambulance, I'll pay that bill myself. Don't let the insurance company know. Yeah, right. Thank you. Anyone else? Judy. This is Whiteside. Please come up and use the microphone up front. Good morning. Good morning. In the interest of full disclosure, I have had a ride with Mr. <laughs> <laughs> on two occasions. Um, one from my home and one from the school. The one from my home was a miserable ride because I live on a dirt road. And halfway through the dirt road, um, I said to him, it wasn't you, um, are we almost there yet? And the guy burst out laughing and said, no, Judy, we're not even halfway down the road, at which point I burst into tears. The second one was a call from the Wareham High School, uh, placed by the school nurse. And um, it took 45 minutes for the ambulance to arrive. I have no medical condition. The nurse at the school knows about it. Everybody at Toby Hospital knows about it. It requires immediate attention. Um, you could have walked faster. Yes. So that's right. So um, I, I would like to ask what the um, the method of answering a call is, because I have some questions that that speak to one of the issues that you had brought up, which is, you know, double training, double coverage, who's actually answering the call first. So I dial 911, and who do I get, and then who is dispatched? It depends on what type of call it is. The ambulance is always dispatched if they're available. If it sounds like it's a heart attack or difficulty <laughs> breathing, the fire departments and the police may also go. Isn't isn't the fire department always dispersed, dispatched on a, a 911? They are notified. They do not always respond, depending on what type of call it is. OK. I, our understanding from the police department was the calls come into the police department, and the police always is dispatched. The no. No, they, there's a lot of times where there's no crews on a call with us. Okay. There's a Usually there calls we're all by ourselves. Depending, if you're in onset, they'll go to everything. If you're in Wayham, they have a list of calls that they'll respond to. Other calls, they don't. The one from my from the school actually was responded to by the fire department, Wareham Fire Department, first, while we waited for the ambulance. And again, I'm not being critical. On, I'm appreciative that my life was saved on both occasions because of the response. Um, have we gone for an RFP for the billing yet? Uh, because the bill, there are only a couple of co companies that do the billing right. in Massachusetts, and you have to know what you're doing as some of you have pointed out um, but uh, you know have you have you examined the we do I've, I've told the procurement officer several times that we need to go out to bid and we haven't yet okay um, and 
when you only have one ambulance up, do you respond to mutual aid? And if so, why? Uh, because it is mutual aid, and if they only have one ambulance, they come help us. And if we only have one, we go to help them. Okay, but then, I mean, has there ever been an instance where, for instance, you have gone on mutual aid to Marion and then been called? I'm presuming that the right, reason I, mean, I, I waited 45 minutes was because there was no ambulance available. There were clearly... Right, and, there if, were cl and clearly mutual aid personnel. might have been tied up, but, and there are other times when we have five calls at once and you can't be everywhere at once. And going back to the fire department responses, William Fire will respond if it's a backup call, they will send somebody out. But if they're on the primary call with us, if it's a heart attack on the primary call, and they don't have a bit anybody in the station, it's gonna take a while for them to get somebody in because they have a certain amount of people on staff that go on the truck, so the st station's empty. Okay, and then um, I guess one last one. You usually respond in what I call the um, hospital on wheels, which is not an ambulance. Right. And your qualification, so we don't, we can't bill for you doing that. But if you got into the ambulance and drove the ambulance, then you would have still one person. Right, and if there's second calls and I'm on duty, if we don't have staff calling the man it fully, I go on the emails. Okay. So um, I guess my question is, why do you as a supervisor or a manager go anyway? There are times because I am administrative and also a response person. A lot of times you might need a second or third a paramedic or additional help, depending what type call it is. And if you're a supervisor, you still have to go supervise your people. I mean, they can function on their own without supervision, but there are calls where they need extra hands and it's good to have an additional person there to, to oversee them. Okay, so if it was a multi-car pile up on 24 or 25 or you know pick a, pick a road that you would respond to um, I can understand that but going to a heart a one person heart attack why would we not have just the ambulance go minus you I mean I'm presuming that the people who are on the ambulance at the time that it responds to a heart attack know how to cope with a heart attack right but if you're doing CPR, you need two people to do that, someone to do the chest and breathe and give medications and all that stuff, and then still someone to drive, so. And so let's not I forget uh, crowd control. Yeah, and a lot of times a person that needs help needs multiple people. If you go in the ministry room, there's five or six people around you if you have something serious. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm not yeah. trying to be critical. I'm trying to see how we can use your expertise and your um, you know, EMT, paramedic, you know, your, your certifications to better provide service without killing ourselves. Okay, and this is the fine line that, right. that we walk here because we try very hard to not get involved in day to day, but in order to look at bigger pictures and how everything fits in ultimately here for budget numbers, we have to kind of understand how things work. So. It's a little bit on the day-to-day -day and how the workings of it, but you're trying to get a bigger picture. So when you send out an ambulance, there's only one person in the ambulance? No, there's two. There's two. Okay. And, but, but one has to drive. One has to drive, drive yeah. and okay. one has to take care of the person. Okay. And, and, and if they have a serious... call with multiple people and you send, the, fir, the guy might respond, oh, so the person might respond with one from home? No? Is that... If, if it's a second call, we need an additional ambulance? Right. They come from home depending on where the call is, if we have two people coming in, one might go directly to the scene right. and the other one comes and picks up the truck. Yeah, right. Okay. So that would explain why you go. Yeah, I mean, okay. if, if I'm on the road and I'm close to the call, I go direct. If I'm in the station, I wait to see if they get a crew. If not, I jump in the emails and take the emails. One last question. Um, they have model ambulances, and somebody asked this earlier, um, you know, not car shows, but, you know, emergency um, responder shows. Can you buy a used ambulance, which really hasn't been used except in shows? Comes, it well, comes back demo, to one of the questions. Yeah. A demo. A demo. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can buy those they're, if they're available. 
I mean, sometimes they don't really build a lot of demos because they, they are expensive and they don't want to just build something and have it on their lot, just hoping that someone buys it. Right, but what I'm saying is, ha have you explored that? Because that might be a quicker way of getting a second ambulance. You are a, you are a money maker. Um, not you, but you know, your division. No, me. Um, and so to be able to get better equipment, a 2006 ambulance is, is ancient and beyond what we should be running on a, t on a now basis. So I know that it's, you know, the, the budget is the budget, but it, there ought to be a four or five year revolving plan to get a new ambulance every whatever period of time makes sense and then keep rolling them forward and getting rid of the old ones. And I think that's what Derek has planned. We're putting the lease payment in my budget now, holding back some of that money mm -hmm. and making that lease payment so on a regular basis, we'll be able to replace these vehicles. I mean, we still have to get authorization at town meeting, but the payment will already be in the budget. Thanks. I have one more. What about um, uh, technology, keeping up with some of the technology that's going on? Are, are you interlinked with the uh, electronic medical records now? Yeah, we've what been. What are we doing progressive that way? We've been doing electronic uh, reports for probably 10 years I mean it's not and we leave a copy <laughs> at the hospital but it's also a web-based program so they can log in and see the, the calls and they, they review them that way too but we still leave a paper copy we don't have the interface with our records in the doctor's office in the hospital like yeah. they're going through recently now all those the grants that are I think but, it, but it is progressive I mean, it's out there. right we, we, we're a web-based program and Whoever we have access can see the reports. Is there any plan to? I mean, it's, and I think that there's a wireless transfer, so you, you can. Yeah. But it's it's not something that ambulances are doing right now. Okay. Now, you did a really good job of getting grants for your um, defibrillators last year. Are there any other grants out there that you're looking? We, we have a, that we're counting on the money for no, grants. we so submitted a federal grant in, in September, October for a, a new ambulance. So we're just waiting. And that's an extremely competitive program. So we're waiting to see if we hear on that. And we should hear the next three or four months. And then on those federal grants with the town, our population, it's a 10% mat match. So looking at the price of what we just paid for that ambulance, we're looking at like 21,000, 22,000. That you'll get back if you win that grant. No, that's the town share. Oh, that's the town share. Oh, the, that's even better. Yeah, they, they, the federal government pays 90%. The town has to do a 10% match. Okay. But you won't know that until, until we hear from it's a Homeland Security grant. So we're holding off on. Um, well, we still have this one, and then we have to pay for this one. We haven't got it yet. And it's a three year lease. And then we'll start the process on a new vehicle. And if we get that. And there's also something out there that. And I think the good thing is up. now that we're leasing that and putting it within the budget, it's having a new ambulance every three years effectively. So. What, what's the Walmart deal? We, uh, that is. Is that dead or? No, it's $200,000 for a public safety vehicle. And we don't get that until a month after they have their occupancy. So Jeez. they haven't started building it. Which is 15? Probably 15. I don't, uh, I don't know. 2015. I mean, yeah, I haven't heard any update when they plan on moving in. Yeah, we had, we had requested that, that, that it not be for the occupancy permit. It'd be when they applied for their permit, which they already have and have paid for, but it's still within the occupancy. So. <coughs> So that re that Walmart ambulance plan, and if it does come, will replace the one you're using now, not the lease one. It'll probably replace the newest one, the 2006. Okay. <coughs> and if we get the grant, that might replace the 2001. Ooh. Okay. I don't hear it's not here yet. So. Yeah, I was just down speaking of them, so it should be up in a few. Okay. But I didn't know if we want to take five. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank no, you, David. You're welcome.